everybody. Patty Ann here. Hang on just a second. We have a friend named Sue on both our um, Facebook group, Cricut Design Space with Patty Ann, and on our YouTube channel. And Sue has um, shown me a really cool font, but she's had a little trouble using it. So let me show you what it is. I got it at dafont.com, and it's called Hopia. So if you're on dafont.com and you come to Hopia, you come over here to the download button and download it. And then I usually go to save as. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to call it Hopia 2 because I already have one. And save. And then I'm going to open the folder. And now the next, here's the folder, Hopia 2. You can see it down here at the bottom. It's a zipped file. You can tell that because there's a zipper on it. So I am going to, un, I'm going to double click on it. And then I have to come up here to where it says extract all. Click on that. And it's going to ask me for a destination, and I'm just going to leave it as it is and say extract. And it's going to put a, a bunch of stuff in this Hopia 2 folder. So here we are. The only one that I really care about is this one right here. If you look at the type, you see it says title, Hopia, company, it tells the company, type, open type, font file. That's the one we want. So I would double click on that one. And it comes up showing you the Hopia font, the general Hopia font. And the next thing I would do is just come up here and hit the word install and it will be installed automatically on my computer. Now I've already done that, so I don't want to do it again. But that's all you do is say install, and then if you want to use it in Cricut Design Space, remember you have to close Cricut Design Space and then reopen it after you install something new or it won't work. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. All right, so we've downloaded and installed Hopia. And then the next thing she did was she wanted to use it in Cricut Design Space, but she wasn't able to find these fancy swirly letters. They are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> so what she tried to do was she went to Babel Map, which is what you need to do. It's a free program. And in this area right here, she came to this drop-down bar and typed in or started with the letter P. And she scrolled down until she found private use area. And there's all this fancy stuff. But whenever she went to go look for things, and she used this scroll box right here, this no longer says private area. It changed to something else. Yep, that's what's happened. That's what happens in Babel Map. So let me show you how to get around that. I'm going back to the private use area. Oops. Oops. Private use area. And now when I want to scroll down to see what else is down here or up here, the only thing I can do is use this up arrow here, not this, or this down arrow here. Once I'm in here with my mouse, I can right click and I can see a larger version of whatever these things are. And say I want to type in the word, well actually I think I'll do um, Anne. So once again I'm here. I want to look for a pretty A. I'm going to right click. Ooh, there's a pretty one. I'm going to put that in there. Now where are the N's? The lowercase N's there. N N and an E. But maybe I want to see if there's a prettier E down further here. So I can use this to scroll down. And I really can't tell what some of these are until I hold my is that an E? There's maybe there's no more E's down here. That may be it. 
So remember, the takeaway from this little tiny lesson today is this. When you're in Babel Map and you need to be in the private use area, do not use this box ever, ever, ever to scroll. Use this arrow key or this arrow key. Do not use this box. Mouse over this, mouse over that. Watch the private use area when I use these things and move. Nothing happens. Watch this private use area when I use the box to scroll. It's not even in private use area anymore. And then when I go back to private use area like this, it's kooky. I don't know. It's gone. So again, type in private use area. And just use this arrow up here to scroll or this one down here to scroll. Oh, and once you get these things down here that you want, all you have to do is come over here to copy and I can minimize this now and come to Cricut Design Space. Let's say I have this Santa's workshop, whatever that is, and I paste this in. Okay, it's not coming in at all. It doesn't even recognize those letters. So what you need to make sure you do when you come into Cricut Design Space, make sure you have the text that you're using selected. There's Hopia. And then when you right click in here and paste, the letters are going to come in as you wanted them. I'm not sure what I did there. I'm going to ungroup and get rid of that guy because I don't know how that so anyway, here they are. And what's nice about these letters is how thick they are, because they would be really nice ones to cut out of vinyl. Now you'll have to be discerning about which ones you use because, you know, maybe that, that's a little too much curly right there. Okay, I have all the letters touching because I want them touching because I'm going to weld them like we had learned about yesterday. Remember, if we just go to make it like it is now, the letters won't stay where we want them to stay. And we have heard something about how you can grab them all and you can attach them, but that still has them cutting as individual letters. I want to weld them with my blowtorch like the welder does. I want to weld that A to the N to the other N and to the E so that they can never be taken apart again. They're going to be one solid piece. So I'm going to come down to the Weld tool, click on it, and then I'm going to go to Make It. And you're going to see how beautifully these would all be welded together into one piece. If I was using vinyl, it would be especially perfect because it would be one whole word out of vinyl, not individual letters. They're all connected with no cut spaces in between. So that's it. Basically, I was trying to show you how to use Babel Map. And again, remember, use this arrow here or this one here when you're in the private use area to scroll amongst all of these things. The same thing happens if you happen to have the Samantha font. I'll have the Samantha font over here, private use area. I can see everything that's in here by using these scrolling arrows, even all the way down to the really little, pretty little flourishes at the end. These things down here. Again, if I right click on them, you can see what they are. There's even words. And I can use this arrow to go back up. But the minute I use this box in here, the minute I use it and try to scroll, everything is lost, basically. Watch. Click. Scroll. Gone. I'm no longer even in the private use area. I've got to come back to the private use area to be able to find that font again. It's the biggest takeaway. Do not use that box to scroll. Okay, that's it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something from it. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Remember, I'll have a link below to the Babel Map um, free download, 
and also a link to our Facebook group and links to my affiliate uh, stores. If you happen to need something and you buy something through my link, I get a small commission, and that just helps to keep me going. So thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>